an important part in our stewardship series. By the grace of God, we have considered certain aspects of kingdom stewardship. Uh, remember our text, Matthew chapter 25, how that we began to learn concerning the parable of the talents. And we said that the parable of the talents is not just, uh, it's not really a parable about your gifts and ability to sing and ability to dance and ability to talk. Actually, the parable of the talent, because as far as scripture is concerned, that word talent there is actually money. All right, so, uh, but in terms of application, you can now put other areas of your life under the light of the stewardship of God as revealed in that particular teaching. So tonight we want to really look at what is in Matthew 25. Please help me with that. Matthew 25, again we'll read from verse 14. Tonight we're looking at a very powerful topic and you cannot but hear this teaching. This is the last message you want to hear from a preacher, but this is the most important one in this season. Matthew 25, we'll read from verse 14. Very quickly, I'll read from here. Uh, we're looking at financial stewardship or stewardship of money. Matthew 25, I'll begin reading from verse 14. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. So originally you already see even from here that there was trading involved. When you hear trading, you know that that has to do with the financial transaction. Is that correct now? All right. So he says, and likewise, he who had received two gained, the word gain is also a financial word, gained the two more also. Verse 18. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's talent. No, his Lord's what? Money. Oh, are you there? Please read verse 18 from your Bible. Let's be sure. I'll pay attention while you read. Please read verse 18 of Matthew 25. Yes. Verse 18 of Matthew 25. So where did you get? So read verse 18 together again. One, two, read. So what did he hide? It's not money. So is the parable about money? Yes. Praise the Lord. I, many of us is we born in church. We've never heard that the other parable is about money. We only heard that use your talent for God. What? According to this scripture, it's about water. Money. I know when you teach about money, uh, sometimes people can start from you, but not here. If you from you will become <laughs> the assistant teacher. Okay, so, and after a long time, the Lord of those servants came and said to the other financial word we see here is account with them. He said to account. So, there was gain, there was trading, there was money. Now, we see account with them. Verse 20. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 22. He also, who had received two talents, came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more. Besides them, his Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have, you have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Verse 24. Then he who had received one talent. Somebody say one talent. One talent. You need to be with me tonight. Say one talent. One talent. He who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown. And gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, 
There you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you mean that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have done what? Deposited. Do you see another financial word here? Deposited my money with a financial institution. The bankers. Uh -huh. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Another financial word. Interest. Therefore, you see how religion, you see what religion does to us? Religion can make you not, no, we're fine. Religion can make you look away from what the Bible is actually saying. Do you know how many financial uh, uh, what concepts we have picked already while reading? But do you know that while growing up, some of us did never saw anything. We just knew the parable, the talents, the master came. In the end of age, then the master came and he sent that one to hell. But do you know he hasn't mentioned hell yet? Are you following? Yes, sir. Are you following? Yes, sir. Praise God. You're all looking like some financial experts today. <laughs> Praise God. I guess you came prepared. Now, look at what it says in verse 28. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For two. Now, this is where the principle begins. Verse 29, please. Read with me. One, two, read. For to everyone who has more, we, no, 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 let's observe the comma. Because in Bible reading, if you miss the comma, you can go and make it say what is not saying. If we read it as, if we read it like this, for to everyone who has more, will be given. It is not a correct statement. For to everyone who has, more will be given. You know, in political science, we say things like the dichotomy of the society. We have what we call the bourgeoisie, and we have what we call the proletariat, or we have what we call the haves and the have-nots, the oppressed and the oppressor. But the Bible is saying here that uh, there is a reality. It says, the one that has, more will be what? We are not here. More will be what, sir? Give it. Now, so what about the one that does not have? But from him who does not have. Even what he has will be what, sir? Taken away. Abba, uh, let's ask the question. Can you take away from somebody that does not have? <laughs> he says, the one that doesn't have, even what he has, meaning that it is in his own eyes that he thinks that he doesn't have. Before God, everybody has something. You can start, you can start making those now because today is a different class. It's a money class. Money classes come in very unique ways. In God's eyes, everybody has what, sir? Everybody has something. Say with me, in God's eyes, everybody, everybody has something. That's very important. You have to know that there is no person that is born poor. One had five, one had two, one had one, but everybody had something. So there is nothing like I was born into a poor family and therefore I am poor. No, sir. God will not permit you to come into this earth and exist without him giving you what we call potentials. Is that correct? Yes, sir. What are potentials? Potentials are the possibilities that are resident on your inside. Potentials are the inherent capacity in you that you have not tapped into. Potential is the book that you ought to have written that you have not written. Dr. Masmuro will say that potential is the dream in you that has not become a reality. Potential is the investment of heaven in you that has not found expression on the face of the earth. And until it finds expression on the face of the earth, money cannot come to you. Are you together with me? Let's finish it very quickly. And he says, to everyone that has, more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, so let's consider financial stewardship. The first principle we need to learn is that there is no one that is born poor. Unfortunately, many people do not believe it. There is no one that, listen, 
What I'm telling you this evening, please, I want to beg you by the mercies of God, even those following online, you need to take it very seriously. The reason is, you will never break free from poverty until your mindset about money changes. Praise God. You will never break free from lack until your perspective about money does what, sir? Until it changes. If it does not change, even if you have 10 million, give it time, you'll be broke. In fact, research has it that many people who have won lotteries, within 12 months of their winning lottery, they became bankrupt again, as though they never won the lottery. Why? They only hit luck. All right? They put their money somewhere or they gambled and then they won something. Their mind has not been renewed to, to sustain the capacity that can host the money they receive. So even if it was Bill Gates that gave them the money, they will waste it. Why? Their mentality is of wastage. The Bible says you gather and put it in a hole. The hole is that, you see, when your mind about money does not change, even God cannot come and help you. Are you following? You're already offended. We've never started. Are you following? Yes, sir. God is concerned about your money. I'll just be sharing with you very important principles tonight. God is concerned about your money. Thieves are concerned about your money. Satan is con concerned about your money. But God is concerned about your financial well-being. God is not looking for your money to take to himself. <laughs> Because God owns both you and the money. In the kingdom of God, please write this down, very crucial. In the kingdom of God, we don't own things. We are stewards of everything that God has given us. In the kingdom of God, we don't own things. We are stewards of everything that God has given us. Do you know what that means? That means that everybody has 24 hours in a day. Is that correct? Zuckerberg has 24 hours in a day. Is that true? Your pastor has 24 hours in a day. The, the, the saintliest of men, if there's any word like that, the most spiritual man, the most religious man, the oldest man, the youngest child, everybody has 24 hours in a day. But what we do with our time often determines to a large extent the harvest that we receive. Is that correct? Is that correct? Yes, what we do with our time goes a long way to affect what happens to our boss. Notice that when the master was done giving them the resources, the Bible says, and immediately he did what? He went on a journey expecting them to profit with what he has given them. And all of them had the same duration. There was no one that had extra time. There is another principle we learn from that scripture. God does not give based on his capacity. Do you want to learn something tonight? God does not give based on his capacity. Even though, yes, he has all things. God gives based on your capacity to receive and manage it. So you can say, God, are you not the one that said in your word that you own the cattle on a thousand years? I mean, just do something and just save me from this financial stress or financial holocaust. God is willing to give you. But you see, God and scripture never support wastage. Is that true? Have you had people in your life that you gave something? Maybe you gave somebody a clothes, and in three days, that clothes has become a rag. What happened? It's not the problem. The problem is not with the clothes. It's with the person that received the clothes. You've been wearing a fine dress for two years. And anytime you wear it, they say, Peperepe is coming. And, I mean, beautiful dress. But then you gave Sulia, your neighbor's daughter. And in, in one week, she wore it morning, afternoon, evening, night, morning, as if she didn't have any other clothes again. And by the time she was done with that clothes, she just saw them using it to carry pots from stove. He said, ah, top. I asked Sulia, he said, eh, I'm out of four hours in a way. It is not, the problem is not with the fabric, it's the mentality. Some of us have clothes of five, six years old. And it's not a sign of poverty. What you wear is not the proof of your worth. Is that true? However, you should not look like, praise the Lord. Balance it. Amen. But you see, 
the mind of that girl reflected in her treatment of what she was giving. She didn't consider it as a gift. She considered it as her own. So she could behave as she liked with it because it's her own. That's why in the kingdom of God, once you begin to function with the mentality of an owner, you will never meet up with the standard of God for kingdom stewardship. You don't own anything. Tell your neighbor, you. Look at the person like an evangelist. Say you. Say even you. You don't own anything. You are a steward. You are a manager of God's time, of your body, of your health, of your resources, of your money. Say that money. Say it. Of your money. In First Kings chapter 20 verse 4, uh, many years ago I read that scripture and it blessed me. That was the story of ben Hadad, the king of Syria. First Kings chapter 20 verse 4. Uh, I think the king was saying, my lord, O king, according to your saying, I am yours and all that I have. And the king of Israel answered and said, my lord, O king, just as you have said, I am thine and all that I have. Or I am yours and everything I have. Now, this was an earthly king, all right, challenging the other king that listen, because you see, in ancient times, the way they gained territories was by conquest, all right? That's why you will notice that there was the Grecian Empire, there was the Babylonian Empire, there was the Medes and the Persian Empire, there was the Roman Empire. Are we following? The Roman Empire was a very strong, all right, colony. And the Roman Empire. That was why the Jews came and they were telling Jesus, said, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Because you see, the tax collectors, for example, Matthew, you know why they didn't like Matthew? Matthew was a tax collector, and as a tax collector, your tribute is to the boss at Rome. And so they knew that tax collectors were corrupt guys, and they were taken from, the, and you see, the Jews were, you know, they were the sanctimonious religious guys. Well, like, what's all this? Jesus, will you restore the kingdom again, please? They thought that Jesus was a political messiah that would deliver them from the whiplash and the oppression of the Roman Empire. But it was not so. What Jesus promised to give them was not political power. It was spiritual power. Because he knows that the spiritual controls the physical. Somebody say amen. amen. That was just by the side. So, actually, what you will need to understand is that when the Roman Empire came, for example, this king came and then he said, Listen, you and your wives and yourselves and your children, and I own everything. That king didn't argue. Is that true? Ben Hadad said, listen, I am yours and all that I have. Now, that's an earthly king harassing another one and that one said, I submit by force because I know that you are powerful. But God does not even force you to give to him. You know one of the reasons why some of you or many people have issues with, with tithing? Because the way it was preached, it was as if God was forcing man and that if you don't do it, God will come and kill you. There are people that have lived 100 years, 100 to say 500 years, 100 years, 200 years, one something years, and you'd be surprised that if you ask them, do they tithe? They'll tell you they don't tithe. But your pastor has told you that if you tithe, you have long life. And so, your neighbor that used to tithe, now tithe, he said, he used to tithe. He has tithe card. When we were back in his room, we saw tithe card, and now he has tithe. That means your tithing message, then you put a cloth there. So you judge God's faithfulness in your life by whether you tithe or not. So God doesn't love you if you are not a tither because God loves tithers. But if you are just a cheerful giver and you are not a tither, the love of God for you is, is like this. But that's not so. The goal of tithing, number one, is to help you get discipline. Somebody say discipline. Number two, the goal of tithing is to actually sanctify God in your heart so that you have that mentality. That every time you receive anything, you think God first. It's about thinking first, not just giving. Are we together? No, most times, when I check the elders, elderly people in church, once they receive, for example, they may give them 10 tubas of yam, and they can take two and say, go and give our pastor in his mission. They are not doing it because God will come and kill them. Many of them have that consciousness that everything I receive is not my own. God must have a portion in it. Are we together? Somebody that cannot tithe from what he receives. Is he the one that will have discipline to save an, an extra 10% for him himself? That's why you notice many people are spent three, they waste money because they've not even learned the discipline of tithing, which is not an introduction into kingdom life. There are greater things in the Bible than tithing. But tithing is part of the proof that you are honoring God in your heart. 
Some would say, well, I don't do 10%, I do 50%. 10% is the minimum. And nobody's fighting you for that. Like some would say, this is my mid widow's might too. How many of you know widow's might? Have you heard of widow's might before? Anybody? Mr. Ruth, what is widow's might? <laughs> my last card. I will give God my last card. If I give God my last card. He will take care. He's still last card. So like that there is last card. Many people give God last card. They will say, ah, God. They say you can double money. This is my last 500. I know if I give this, this prophet, he's a real prophet. He saw revelation for that other lady now. If I sow it into that anointing, then Jehovah will arise. God is not a Yahoo boy. Widow's might is not your last card. There is no way in the Bible where the Bible says widow's might is your last card. Widow's might actually means everything you have. You see, because we have put our own religion to read Bible. To say, Daddy, this is my widow's mind. Too. How much? You earn 200,000. You now give Pastor 200 million. I say, Daddy, this is my widow's mind. Too. Eh? Then the Daddy will now pray and almost die on your matter. No! <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> what came in? And another safari, I wanted to try widow's mind. I said, eh, This is what uh, they are going to say. You didn't lie to me, sir. You lied to the only this is the one that this is the only person you are dealing with. Because you see, in the kingdom of God, the first person you are dealing with is not your pastor, it's not your church, it's the Holy Ghost. <laughs> are you together here? Be conscious that your money is not your own, by the grace of God. When I receive money, people know I have goals and I have things. I'm always thinking first, who does God want me to do with this money? Some of you don't even know this. Okay. Uh, Brother Toby will know this. The money to print equip came two times. My first book that I ever printed. It came in two times and I distributed the money. Why? Because people had need. And I can't watch people have need. It's like saying somebody, some people want to pay school fees and there's no money for school fees. I mean, I now want to print my book and say, take and read. People that cannot pay school fees. Just for example. Why? Because you see, you, your concern must be about what God wants to do with your resources, not what you feel like doing. Because if you do what you feel like doing, later you will find out that you will, you will never be fulfilled pursuing your own dreams. You will only be fulfilled when your resources are brought under the government of God. Many of us, it's only our prayer life that is under the government of God. Our financial life is under our own government. Say amen if you believe it. Amen. If you agree or disagree, say amen. Anyway. So God can talk to me about a lady I'm trying to propose to. Or God can talk to me about uh, what else does God talk to people about these days? God can talk to me about whether I should buy that shoe or not. God can talk to me about God should not talk to me about money. Talk to me about spiritual matter. Hey, hey, the demons say, hey, Baba, all these cockroaches coming out every time. Lord, what are you saying about it? God, talk to me. There are two books in the whole world that, re that reviews your true motive. And your true character. The first book is the Bible, right? The two books that reveal you truly are. Number one is the Bible. You know the Bible is like a mirror. Is that true? The Bible is like a two-edged sword. Is that true? The Bible is like a light. Is that true? The Bible is like a lamp. Is that true? Is that true? So the first book that reveals who you really are is what, sir? The Bible. The second book that reveals. <laughs> Nobody wants to know the second book. The second book that reveals who you are is your checkbook. Don't say, well, but I got me. I don't have checkbook. Don't worry. Eh, that alert column in your text message, eh, that one reveals your checkbook. So that means that we can we can know your character as a believer by the direct that sorry by the direction of your investment, by the direction of your spending. The direction of your spending becomes the pointer. To your true character. You may come to talk and say, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fail me all my days. After singing it, they'll say, Talk, let's see you. You see, sometimes, eh, now this is a joke, please. Sometimes in heaven, I just think, when we are singing, Amen, Amen, Jesus, I just want more of you. And so God doesn't say, eh, eh, Give me Alpha, check. Alpha. Then give me a say, eh, Last week, 
JC Penis, uh, wig, wig, less wig, crop top, sub, uh, crop top, wet shoe, uh, two days ago, uh, 16 gowns and has not paid finish. Uh, yesterday, barbecue, ice cream, pepper chicken, cabbage, carrots, indomie, fried egg, sardine, and a little salad. Today, call, uh, this morning before coming for service, uh, she has sent money for uh, to change the entire wardrobe. Okay, so how much did she not put enough uh, windows might? <laughs> they say, Lord, I know we do it. I hope we don't do it yet. I said, Lord, then Abraham's blessings are my. It's offering time. Abraham's blessings are the offering pass can pass the first time. Abraham's let second time. The last give is like they are watching us. Like, oh, oh, I am blessed in the morning. Then you now speak that you check. You already know how it feels in your hand. You already know. Mm, mm, and ready. Mm, mm, last one, the last one. 15, 15, 15, 20, uh -huh. Some some even segment it when you go to church. I used to be before, but I stopped it. You already know 50. Because especially if it's in church and we don't have, we don't do that here anyway. One of it. Where you do often like 10 times. That church knows that is now your 500 that you will not pay for the jail and the food there. When they collect it in a 10 times, you still pay. But they say once, you'll be like once. Yeah, yeah. So you should dance and give once that kind of 15. Some people say, Oh, bring it, bring it, oh, you've not collected money from me. And you drop your retina with, 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 with pride. They say, what did you give to God? Then they say, ah, so they gave, she gave 15 naira, but she spent 75,000 naira on herself this week. Then they ask the person, do you love God? Say me, I can die for Jesus. You cannot, you can't die. You can't die for Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you still with me here? If you are going to say amen. amen. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, an important scripture. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. We're going to be learning a lot tonight. Deuteronomy 8, 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power. Somebody say power. power. Remember we were sharing last night, Kingdom of Miracles. We spoke about, listen, it's of many forms. This one is power to get wealth. Some versions will say you make wealth. Power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which is what to your fathers, as it is this day. He says you will remember. That means if God is not in the center of your thoughts, forget about the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow. Can I say that again? Can I say that again? If God is not in the center of your thoughts, Forget about what the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and has no sorrow. There are two gods that rule the earth. There are two idols that rule men. Maybe we should put it that way. There are two gods that rule men. The first is the God of the Bible, the only true God. But there is a smaller God. That one. You will think he's Satan. Praise the Lord. How many of you know that Satan is a wicked devil? How many of you know that Satan is wicked? He has come to steal, kill, and destroy. Is that true? Bible says, Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil is come down with your pieces with great fear. Bible says, The God of this world. But the Bible makes us to understand when Jesus was speaking. Jesus never gave Satan a chief place. Jesus said, You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is the Aramite for money. So that means there are only two gods that are really men now. One is God of the Bible. The second is what? Money. So the second God that is really men is what, sir? Is money. Somebody say money. Mm. Mm. Somebody say money. And it is easy to say that God is the one really. Very easy to say. And who is, of course, if I ask you now, who rules your life? You say God. But out of 24 hours, it's possible that. For example, some will have the privilege to travel out. And because you work per hour there and you are paid per hour, there is every tendency that because you are paid per hour and you are a Nigerian, <laughs> or the rugged Bubu, or the greatest Baba, or the greatest Gigi uh -huh. then you get there. Then you work for 15 hours. Then you quickly do another three hours short term work. Quickly. 
and then you do 18 hours every day. Then four hours weekly snow. You wake up again, you have gone. You are like a German machine making the dollars. Until after six months, you find out that you have never been to church for one hour. That's when you will know that it's not the God of the Bible that you were. You see, what you were serving in Nigeria was an idol of your own making. A, an ATM to pretend them. But when you now go to America, you find out that you don't really need that baby for why should we pray? Uh, there is light. We don't need to pray, oh God, let her bring light. There's no light problem. There's no bad. Oh God, man, I can't see. There's no bad. There is no. So all the things you are praying about in Nigeria as your cogent prayer point, they have been answered there by a government that does not acknowledge God. Then you now come and say, ah, then the first day, the first day, chakara, Then you see all those ladies with their skin piece, they're moving around naked there, they say, ah, talk. Okay. Before you know it, you will use two years ago. By the time you come back home, you will not be able to even recite some again. Then you will find out that Mammon was the God that was ruling in that system. And you felt you felt flat. All your tongue in the 12 hours you found out. All your tongue you said was for material things. You know, there's a way you can press in the spirit, but it's a lie. If God gave you six million now, all that your prayer for was say, see, it's not all about prayer. It's not all about prayer. Some of these things is just money. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I taught you in the Bible. We don't pray because we have needs. We pray whether we have needs or we don't have needs. We pray. Listen, the answer to your prayer point is a test on your heart. Ezekiah said, God said, You will die now. He said, But this is I will not. Okay, this is I will not die. I will, not. Because I will give you 15 years. And then he, when the men came, he took them to, you didn't take them to the temple. You didn't take them to the God that saved you. You say, well, uh, you see, we, are, we are very strong with our military might. All right? I see it was military that saved you when you were about to die. Money is a test. Please write. Money is a test. Let's run that. Money is a test. It's a test of your character. And as I've said, that if you want to know the character of a man, give him power. Number two, give him faith, give him money, give him girls. Some people call it rich, girls, gold, and glory. If a man escapes girls, he may not escape glory. That's fame, all right? Popularity, you're celebrated everywhere. As you are walking, they are playing trumpet and following you like he's the child father of Jesus. As if you are celebrating this on your own head every day. If you don't escape that one, if you escape that one, then gold, money. You see, the reason why you, you don't seem to have too many needs now is because you have not entered some financial realms. Do you know that economics tell us that there is a level we get to the, as our income rises, our needs increase? You that had one banking stock, do you remember banking stock? You don't know banking stock, but at all, you have not. You will get there, you will get there. You that you had one baking stock and slip on the yellow one that those are bookies. You know slip on. You know yellow slip on different colors, blue that used to have mouth like the mouth on the front of the trailer. Do you know slip on that? That can float yellow. Uh, you don't know slip on. Where did you even grow up? Do you, you don't know slip on. Talk. Oh, you get there. <laughs> are you here? Now you had one baking stock you wear for service and you know one gentle jean like that. You had a palm and one cocoa shoe. You don't even need to pray about what to wear. Once you get to the, you carry your skirt and the black skirt. That black skirt, one of the ways you can know that is that one is, they have used iron to ionize it. It's a, one part is already shining. Hallelujah, sisters. All right, <coughs> happy we met me. Let's continue. Now, you will notice that after, if, I'm, if you are with me, say amen. Amen. After a while, as, you know, suddenly you have a brother that sends you something for the month, a month end. Just, just anything, no, no, not your motives, so just to bless you. All right, okay, let's use uncle because we use brother the issue. Just your uncle sending you something from America. Suddenly, you will just notice that you, you will now start feeling inconvenient. Ah, uh, eh, 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 sister, tell me, eh, hello, lele, rag. How much did you say you bought that your, that your watch, that uh, Christian deal? Then she says, eh, it's just 12k, just 12k. Say, ah, sister, we, uh, that's your wig. That your list with yeah, how much do you say what's the game? She now say uh, six five. Say but but your but the original one got say it's fifteen k the original fifteen k. Then she now goes to her room and sees that say mm-hmm. she will close her door and she writes and then twelve k with a uh-huh, six k uh-huh. You see, hey, 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 
that body spray. Mm-hmm. What's the what? mm-hmm. Then she calls my wife and says, hey, sorry, mama, that, that, uh, she, then my wife now say, hey, it's already film special. It's already film special. Perfume ah, special. They say, hey, how much does it pass? He said, is there no discount? I said, well, I won't do promo. It's now 18,000. Uh, 18, oh, yeah. hey, can I still have one? I said, I see one man that's left. Hey, just write my name there. I'll, I'll be paying this for many time. Then suddenly, you find out that they sent you 72,000. And even 2000 to use for transport fare in the month to come for service. You cannot bet. Then you now try to say, I can't come for service. <laughs> the, Lord, the Lord show mercy. Amen. You that you said, I can never have more than two suits. Well, I mean, what do I need two suits for? Is it not to be the one commission? Let's just pray God. We don't care when this gospel leads us. We go there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, this one of God is like today's word. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> okay, let's close. Hallelujah. Should we continue? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. You know, suddenly you just find out that, hey, that, now I'm not talking about myself. I, there are some things I don't do. My wife knows. There are some things I do. There are some things I like. All right? When we get there, you find out part of the purpose of money is for pleasure. It's not wrong. Do you understand? Yeah. But it's not the first one. It's, if you are worshiping pleasure, the Bible says, see that living for pleasure is dead. Why is he in the life? You understand? So it's not, uh, but amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then you just see one apostle. Maybe there's a brother. You just saw one apostle. He's always wearing the breasted online. He said, You just tell your pillow, of hey, John. You say you can wait. You say, I can wait. You say, Real suit, daddy. Not cold. Say, hey. say there is a, uh, Do you see this picture as mentioned? Can you, can you do something like around this? Like, but let my own have bishop color. Then when you now want to go for service, it becomes difficult. You know why? You will come late because you are choosing clothes. Before when you had one, as you paid my life on the TV, you are already serving. You are already sweeping the floor. Everybody, you are hallelujah, welcome to service. Hey, my day. You are 10 minutes early. You still say, oh, you came late today. I'm so sorry. But now you check out. Mm, does this one match? Mm, if I put this shoe, mm, if I now, mm, <laughs> then you check, you say, hey, it doesn't match. And this makeup that I use is, mm. Then you go back to the church. Before you know, one hour has gone. I said, I want to look good for my girl for one hour. Then when the service is now elongating and the word of God is coming powerfully, but it's already two hours. See, that's why I don't like all this much. That's why I love this big church. Okay? Too much talking is not. Just tell us and let us go. Then church now becomes fashion parade. Why? Money has come to reveal what was really in your heart. It's not when you had money that it was there. Are you here? You don't know what money can do. Suddenly you bought your first car. Hallelujah. You even call your entire generation. And your ancestors. I don't have issues with ancestors. And then they come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got my car. Praise God. Suddenly. Then you say, ah, this is not my neighbor's jeep. Mm. Hey, one more day did you say, you say, ah, ah, ah the engineer. Mm. V6, V8. They say, mm. how much is that V8 now? And then he said, hey, around six million, six million, six million. Mm, yeah, I still have one million. Instead of building a vision, I like it locally. <laughs> when I used to sell beer, beer palo, you know what those beer people used to say? I can never forget. See, they it. Okay, I will, I will never forget it. When I doubt, I forget about it. Do you know that? They will tell me, ah, give forward, he that we cannot use money. Are you following me, my friends? You know, this is money. We have to be practical. It's not so. Amen. I would, but amen. He said, Ah, oh, nah, and if for what he call you. Oh. Then he would tell me, yeah, I'll Bring two trophies, your tea nation. Bring two. Then I'll bring cold one, your tea nation. Then we'll bring two. We'll serve them two. And after I serve them two, sometimes one man can drink one cup of ah, it. Has happened many times. Then he will say, Ah, oh. he will say, Ah, oh, forget God. Uh, yeah. For this land, for this town. Now we for, now we they run now. Another one. Like, what would I keep? You keep shopping. After a while, then you say, hey, wait, wait. How much everything now? Then we now say hey, it's already four thousand. They say, eh? Wait, it's okay. Hey, tell your I'll give you thirty thousand now. Mm-hmm. My son. When I come tomorrow. Because today we we'll go, we need to drink tomorrow. I'll come then. Mm-hmm. Tell her to not be offended. Hey? That's not the way to be. So you will work as a bricklayer for eight hours, carrying block, mixing cement, eating Pepsi, drinking Pepsi, and 
and bread. With a wagon. That's what they eat. Amen. But it's not only for hallelujah. That's what you need to be strong. And then the money you ought to use to go and take care of your family. That money is revealing your heart that you can be a hard worker and still be very selfish. Are you following? Money is a test of your character. Don't say you have great character because, listen, if you are not faithful with the little you have, it's already a sign that you will not be faithful when you have much. God already said it by the word. He said it that is faithful in little, he's already faithful in much. Praise the Lord. The reason I said God gives, not based on his capacity, but based on your ability to manage, is because, notice, he gave five, ta five talents, and that one multiplied it to five. He gave another one too, and he multiplied it. But when he gave one, notice, the master was not wrong in giving that one one. That means if he had given the one six, even the man, it was a bad debt, it was a wrong investment. Could it be that even in our own lives, is we are almost getting to we are getting close to wrong investment with respect to finance and time and relationships? Wrong investment. God gives you some money, it comes. Maybe shares, I don't know, you know, or you do business or somebody blesses you. And then the first thing you are thinking of is, ah, my wardrobe. I have 12 gym. I need three more. I need there's even this latest shredded that I need my own too. So, and it's all for the ground. So that when I go on Instagram, I said, ah, we are here too. Hallelujah, we are here. They say this voice is going we are here. They do your post. I say, hey, make it look like I say, I don't join them. And yet, the poor is around you. You are doing nothing. Giving to God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. Church, mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. A ministry can need, let's, let's, let's use an example of just something general around us. The ministry can need a generator. How much is generator? Let's say 200,000, for example. Somebody can go to a club now. Well, let's assume the person is a non believer anyway. A non believer can go to a club now and buy drinks for his friends, not for God, for his friends. And those, they just buy more wet and some of these things. And before you know it, they, they spent 800,000. And the bottles on the table may not be more than five. The ladies need to bait themselves. And then the other will go on WhatsApp and say, oh, My friend celebrated me. Thank you very much. Ah, I feel that brotherly love. But in church, somebody's daughter may not pay school fees. And another person's daughter, they are considering, no, she's not going to have that. She's going to, she's going to, she's going to a better. Mm -hmm. They say there's one university that the daughter of the family is better. That's where she's going. I'm not. And then it now makes it look as if we don't understand the economy of the kingdom. In the Acts of the Apostles, now just add this to it. It's not in my book. In the Acts of the Apostles, the Bible says that they have all things in common. They were sharing what they had. Do you know we can't practice that way? We are selfish now. And the man that Safira brought something now. If it was in talk today, if anybody gives the ministry that one, you would say, wow, ah, wow, you even sold your land. I know something, you know, they still brought the portion. Ah, God bless you, more grace. Ah, that's your widow's mind. But God was not pleased with that. Because there are times, this is about the government of the Holy Spirit. There are times God has been to services many times by the grace of God. It should have happened to some of you as you're working with Jesus. Where the Spirit of God will tell you, Oh God, how much did he bring to church? They say, I hate that. say, Good. It's that day, you say, Drop everything inside of people. Not go and be pastor and let them know I gave. Just drop everything. And you're like, No. I should give. No, no. See, my, my belt is bad. <laughs> the one that gave you life, you are arguing about belt. <laughs> see, is that you are alive, that's why you are, you are talking belt. When cancer hits you once, you find out that you say that you're four million that, that, that is making you work. The pastor cannot correct you. You are four million. You keep saying four million. Even from drink, say four million. Don't worry. When a little affects you, you will notice that that's when you will acknowledge that you have no one but God. That it will not be a song, it will be your lifestyle. Say, ah, we don't have anybody again. You think the people that their pictures are online that they say give them money, you think they've not spent money before they have to go and beg on Dubai, they have money. But you'd be surprised they may have a neighbor that can actually solve that problem, but it's just not willing to help. Why? We are selfish people. Imagine I said today's service is bring and share, everybody come with something. You'll be surprised because we are selfish. One person can have something of maybe 10,000 that can help others. I'm giving you examples, all right? Simple things. I'd be surprised say, mm -hmm. I can't carry our new toaster here. Yeah? New toaster. No. Uh, who are the members there? Okay, if Mrs. Aribisala comes, eh, I can give Mrs. Aribisala my toaster. 
I know that she would, uh, you know, like in the future, uh, when I want to gain admission, she will help me. That's what we do. There are couples that will go to big churches today just for uh, for business transactions. Are you here? Wow. This kind of business, nobody will go on business and there's nothing much to say here. <laughs> Hallelujah. There's nothing much to buy and say here. But you say, uh, you say uh, what do you do? Um, uh, 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 sir, if you need uh, logistics for where, where? Uh, I thought you just came to give a last test. Yeah. Yes, so that we need to see some counseling. Do you come for counseling or for market? Say, yeah, don't go to a church because it is close to your house. Go to a church because you see it is closer to Christ. Mm. Are you learning something? Yes. <laughs> it is God that gives power to get wealth. God is the source of true prosperity. Unless the resources in your care, God is the source of true prosperity. Unless the resources in your care serve God's purpose, they are wasted. God's call on the believer, unless your resources serve God's purpose, they are wasted. Now, it's not that you won't do things with them, but in light of eternity, they are wasted. God's call on the believer is to be accountable to him for the use and the management of our resources. So, what God did was to give them talent according to their ability to manage. Somebody say management. Money. Listen, if there are any biggest financial principles in the world, if you like, go to Lagos Business School, go to London Business School, go to Harvard, go to Cambridge, go to Princeton, Go to Yale, go to Oxford. If there is any business finance principle you must know, number one of it is management. If you are the best investor in the world and you don't know how to manage, you will still be bankrupt. Are you following? Yes, sir. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7. Very big. It's a popular scripture, but again, we need to read it together so that we we'll see it properly. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 17 because he's talking about the security and the power of wisdom. Proverbs 4 7. Wisdom. Are you there my friends? Can we read together? One, two, three. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Wisdom. Can I ask you a question? Between wisdom and money, which is stronger? I know you say wisdom because it sounds spiritual. But you actually know that, to be honest, too. The Bible says wisdom is a defense. Money is a defense. But it's just that in the day of trouble, there is a limit to which money can deliver you. There are certain situations that define money. That's where you hear your Bible say, oh, oh, duty, oh, oh. meaning <laughs> money can solve it. But thank God for the anointing. You know why many young ministers want to believe the anointing? They know that. What money cannot buy? The oil. And they know that if you have the oil, you can trade with it. Amen? Amen. If you have the oil, so, um, okay, she has cancer. Okay. Uh, if I pray for her in 10 minutes, I should be okay. Uh, but uh, what will you do for this ministry? What will you do? What can you do for this ministry? Then you'll find out, what can you do for this ministry? And say, hey, Daddy, uh, uh, we, we can buy a mechanical gym. I say, mechanical gym. No, with a private gym. You are not in private gym. I mean, you have to see what are you doing? With a private let him die mine. So it's not about passion, it's not about compassion for souls, it's about passion for self-glorification. Then you just see a 20 something year old guy like me just step out of a crowd. And then I come to young ministers and I say, The Lord is faithful. Praise you know. What I'll be doing is I'll be misleading those young men because they'll be wondering, ah, because we are pressing and hey, we are preaching this gospel, but uh, say, ah, you know, you don't understand the dynamics of the gospel, don't worry. All right, let's just, just keep trusting God, eh? Keep trusting God. Then before you go, they go and cut corners because they teach it, they don't understand the story. They, they didn't see these cars. They just came out of your prayer and said, Hallelujah. Let's be careful. Proverbs 35 to 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge it, including your spending. That's what God is calling us to. Including your spending. If I say you should bring your statement of account from January till now, you'll be shocked what you have bought. You know, some of us say, Me, I don't buy anything. I'm, I'm very disheartened. <laughs> You'll be shocked how you, you were sending ethnic to people carelessly. 
Because we are arguing about something on WhatsApp, the guy said, My data is a must. He said, No, I will send you data. This matter. Then they say, Extreme revival. They say, I have a data. I mean, she give us data. Are you following me? Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. Part of acknowledging it is letting God know, see, you own my resources. What would you want me to do with it? Praise the Lord. Understanding is key. Because that was what we read in Proverbs 4 7. Understanding is key. Listen, your financial situation will not change because they lay down on you. Are you following? Uh, but let me, you come. Let me, let me lean on you. You are, you are slow. You are not ready. You are not sitting back. You don't believe in the, the power. Now, if I lay hands on you, don't forget, I don't say anything. Now, if I lay hands on you and I say, hey, receive money. Now, go and sit down. It doesn't mean you will receive money. But receive money, he did even say amen. Talk. Amen. Uh, amen. Okay, so, was it last Sunday I did it for my wife at Tokyo? Because last week, this was. And then, you know, maybe I should just say this, you know, it's humorous, but it's not an offensive thing, so I can say it. I've been receiving dollars for some, for some years now, by the grace of God. And I remember one day, my wife, I don't know what class, she was like, ah, 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 you know that godly envy. <laughs> that, ah, ah, man, no, ah, ah, me, when I, like, me, I don't say I'm going to West Side, I go, ah, ah, mm, you know that, mm. so I read, so one day I told God, you know, I actually said this on Wednesday, that I said, I don't know if you remember, it was here, that I said, God, give her something, because this is what she said. I don't know if you remember, but I said, I'll pray, I said, God, then, give her something too, so that, uh, so that will rest. <laughs> Do you remember I said yeah. Then on Sunday, Aunt told, I mean, she just did something and we went out and I know some of you saw the pictures. And she just took care of me. I was taking care of her. And I said, Oh, okay, let's give you out of that, which. And I said, Okay, okay, yeah, let me pray for you. And they took it seriously. I think she even knelt down. Maybe she knelt down. Maybe she does something. Yeah. She knelt down. They took it seriously. And I was like, ah, Okay. Since you want to talk the oil, let's, let's see what we can do. And, then I, and I said, This. Week or then about this video, they will give you something. Man. And then she does hear the I said, I hope that does it. It's not like a friend that they've been talking about dollars. How much are they changing? You know, when what's someone to give you dollars like that? Because you ask me, sorry, how much is this change? How much is the person who said, Hey, you need dollars? I'm giving you wisdom. Are you? <laughs> hallelujah. Mm, amen. Okay, if that sister are not, you don't need hallelujah. And that was how she received it. And she was very happy, you know. And I just felt, it's not me that gave her the dollars. She just honored God in me. And God just answered. Do you see that? Are you following? Let's make progress. So, part of investing in understanding when it comes to finance, we have to run now, is you need to read books about finance. Don't think that because they just laid out, hey amen, it's let your finance change, katash. Uh, even if your finance change for a day, you can go and cause problems tomorrow again and you lock inside it. Buy books on finance and read it. And I don't believe in all these books about money. I don't read my Bible money. No. Part of getting wisdom is look for people that have a track record in that field. Ask them questions. That's why this night now, we are talking career and business on Instagram. If you like, no, no, John. I don't say if you like, no, John. If you see the CV, of, did you see the profile of the man I'm bringing? You cannot have, you cannot use 500,000 to bring that man. Mm. They are bringing me for it. For you think, go and check his profile. These are not, uh, uh, Martin, Martin. Uh, no, these are not the people that read Brian Tracy. Are you here? Don't you read this? I come and tell us on this. You see me, I don't, me that I want to host, I have you not have sex. I mean, it's God helping me. At least, ah, 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 ah. You can't read Brian Tracy, I come and tell you. That's not I'm talking something. When you read this profile, even you, you'll be humble now. You say, talk. Talk to me, sir. You will see how I'll behave this night. I won't go there and say, um, sir, you know I've got it to now. Just say, sir, talk to me, sir. Talk to me. <laughs> That's why the other man will talk to me. <laughs> what is God's purpose for giving you financial resources? What is God's purpose for giving you financial resources? Number one, very quickly, number one. It is to extend heaven's governance on earth through you. To extend what, my friends? Heaven's governance on earth through you. Uh, you see, there's a point we'll get to in revive hundred. You see, I'm teaching that kingdom come. I'm talking about kingdom of miracles. Everybody likes kingdom of 
until I say that it will be done on earth. Then I talk about money. And I will talk about money very well until you get it. Because you people will not be poor. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you that you have resources to do kingdom business. Amen. Extending, all right, heaven's governance on earth through your own resources. Another reason why God, all right, blesses us financially, another purpose of money, financial increase, is for soul winning purposes. For soul winning purposes. For soul winning purposes. Yes, you can subsume it under, or right, extend it, but we need to make it clear. Soul winning purposes. For example, the lady that was here in one of our retreats and said that what God had said was a tract. What if somebody did not drop the money for the man writing the tract to print the tract? The tract would die in his notebook. Nobody knows. Even the printing of the quid by the grace of God. Was it not miracle, miracle that happened? I think in our three or four days, the Lord just said, okay, now you print. And in three to four days, pa, pa, pa. people that didn't talk about it, that we didn't. And you see, when you care about God's needs, God cares about your needs. Let's jump. Now, I want to say a few things that would really jump to you, and, but it will help you. You are supposed to work for purpose, not money. Now, should you work to end? Yes, the Bible says he that does not work should not eat. But you need to understand what I'm talking about here. The investment of your energy, of your time, should not be that the ultimate purpose is money. <laughs> the ultimate purpose is not money. The ultimate purpose is purpose. The ultimate purpose of money should be purpose. Are you understand? The purpose of money and resources should be for fulfilling purpose, not to just have it. The rich fool had it now. Is that true? And God said, listen, you are a fool. Why? The guy felt there was no, that's all. He has attained, attained the height of his desire. And God said, thou fool. Today, he died. Meaning he put his trust in what he had. Not in the God that was giving him. Meaning God could not flow through him. Listen, if your finance, God cannot flow through you to others. You don't have money, you are poor. Poverty is not just lack of funds. Poverty can be lack of funds, but that's not. Poverty is a state of mind. That if I don't have money, I can never survive. That if I don't have more, I cannot. We think the more, the happier. It's not always true. Does that mean lack makes us happy? No. But we are saying, the more is not really the merrier sometimes. We should talk about the effectiveness of what we have received. Do you see that? Channeling it towards impact. What are we achieving with what we are receiving? That's what we are talking about. If what you have received, God is gaining from your gain, then you are truly prospering. Are you here? You are, some of you are school teachers here. Is God prospering from your teaching job? Why? Who are you leading to Christ? Who are you preaching to? Who are you discipling? Who are you giving something to just invest in? Small girls, you're noticing that if they are not careful, they may begin to enter into things. I tell them, ah, for 100 naira city, I'm following that guy in that corner. From the way I'm that city. See, some people are missing it just because of sometimes little change. Do you know? You'll be surprised. Somebody will just go and rob now and they will, and they will burn in the tire just for 10,000 naira. While we don't say that you should now take responsibility for the whole world, you are not El Shaddai, but the people around you, the body of Christ, the church of God, where you worship, your local assembly, house fellowship, this and that, you should be, your neighbors, you should be able to invest in people's lives. You know the, pro the book of Proverbs says something very important. He said, cast your bread upon many waters. After many days, it will return. That's a very, very powerful law of investment. He didn't say, cast your bread upon one. You know what we do? We only cast it on one. I know if I keep giving this, it's one day. One day. No. Cast it meaning scatter. He says, there is he that scattereth. Yet, increase it. And there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and it tendeth to poverty. Meaning there is a way you can avoid. You see, if you are holding in the kingdom, you are not living in the kingdom. Others are not king. Kingdom people don't hold things. There are people that have shoes that the shoe will rot in their house after five years that they have locked the shoe somewhere. Huh? Then they will throw it out. And you'll be surprised. A 12-year-old girl will still go to that place and go and take that shoe and try to amend it. Why? When it was good, why could you not give it out? 
Some of us have clothes stuck in our wardrobe, but we're not, we can't give it out because we don't want them to fire us out by giving us our clothes out. Somebody can be dying near you and you are, you are cooking something that is like an incense. And you know there are some soup, the way they spread is like evangelism. <laughs> are you here? Then you are not saying, Abasi, ay, ay, ay. Somebody is dying there and the, your other neighbor just can't say, then you say, Abbas, yeah, you are expecting me to be responding, but there's nothing to do. After you see the Abbas, you carry your food, you, lock, you will now lock your life back. Once you have one, oh. Then you come back, you give your dog to you, then your neighbor is now dying. Then you say, ah, I, I manifest Christ like this. You lie. Anybody that knows to do good that does not do the sin of So don't think I'm preaching this so that you give us money so that. No! <laughs> it's a lifestyle. Listen. Giving should not just be an action. It should be a lifestyle. In fact, you should derive joy from giving. You know what? It is more blessed to give than to receive. I know there are some Christians. Once they go to church, they are looking for who they can track after service. Ah, mommy, I'm pretty. Hey, daddy, hey, sister. So that maybe one day they'll say, Ah, you said, come, say, what are you even doing? Eh, hey, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. It is more blessed to give. You know what that means? That means if I tell you now that, Ah, I'm doing this thing for free as your pastor. If you're a wise member, do you know what you should do? You should actually look for ways to say, no, ah, pastor is doing this for free. Okay, but what does this thing work? Ah, this is 40,000 where I try somewhere else. Ah, okay. Ah, it's 20 I have. Pastor, I, I want to support this thing you are doing. Some will even still tell the pastor, eh, even this free, are you sure that at the end, you know, we are hosting by purpose. For example, I, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to be very basic tonight. I hope he's helping us. Somebody said, uh, Pastor, somebody is asking that as you ask me that she is shy to ask you uh, how much in the end of the course. So I said, so I said, the reason why I will make it look like you will pay is because if I don't do that, you will not be serious. You know, notice, when something is free, unless you are really disciplined, you don't value it. It's a, and it's a law in business, it's true. Most times, when things get more expensive, you, you will now do it. That paper that you were throwing up and doing, <laughs> once it's expensive now, you'll be surprised how you did. You will cut it like egg in a crate. So, our sense of, and it's, and it's, it's actually sickness, that our sense of value goes to, if it's more expensive, then it's really value. So, you can go to a Bible college and pay 150,000 naira. And what they are teaching you is what we are doing in our Bible study on Tuesday. Now, I was talking with somebody in the U.S. who followed maybe some of our Bible study sessions. And this man actually said that this your series you are doing is what they teach as a course in the seminary in the U.S. I said, eh hey, that's what we are talking about. Because even me too, where I got it from is not just heaven. It's research. My YouTube, that's my wife. My YouTube is like a university. If I tell you the number of videos I watch in a week, you'll be, you'll be afraid. I, you would think I'm attending lecture with those students there, and I'm studying different things, not just Bible. Don't sit down there and think that. So, so when we are giving you things, and then someone says, "Okay, I'm okay," uh, we get the certificate. They will say, "Okay, mm, okay, there will be certificates." Uh, when we want to can collect the certificate, will we pay? Are you more bothered about how much you want to pay or what you really want to give? So I saw that ah, this person's sense of value is very wacky. Let, let the person not do. Because it's those kind of people that will later carry your material and turn it to be the amount of shares everywhere like it's a track. No. In fact, those ones won't do it. They won't do the assignment. They won't do it. Your sense of value is revealed by the direction of your finance. So they are doing something for free. Please, and, and, and please, this will be our trademark as well. When you hear that anything is for free, don't just say, ah, oh, thank you. I so love you. Everything is always for free. This one is, thank God. Audio message for free. Everything for free. They are not touching that they pay for audio message. And you buy, and you see me buying a pill. Go to living faith and go and pay for audio message for free. In living, I do your thing. Amen. Go and take it for free. You, eh? you buy this. Thing. People put this out like, hallelujah. Let's level, let's praise the Lord. But here, we say, yeah, take message. Mm. I don't ask me some of my. <laughs> 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 Your sense of value. There are three ways I interact with people. I'm a human. I'm a human, so don't be offended at me. There are three ways I interact with people. Number one is by instruction. If I give you instruction, I see how you attend to that instruction. It will give you a place in my heart. Whether I hear or hear, but it will give you, you, you always have a place somewhere. 
Then if I rebuke you, the first is instruction, the second is rebuke. If I rebuke you and I see the way you are, ah, okay. The third is your level of gratitude. If I'm teaching you the word for 16 weeks, there has never been any identification with me, this ministry, what we are doing, whether online or offline, you are just, it's just a secret discipleship. There's a lie. You are not Nicodemus because you don't have a conflict like Nicodemus. Praise the Lord. Oh no, are you offended? No, I'm not giving you Bible. <laughs> okay. They said they're offended. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're not Nicodemus, for God's sake. And some will come and say, Pastor, ah, I'll be following you. For, hey, for like season, I'll be following you. I know you then. Now, when you're president, I know you then. You know me then. It has not added one egg to my to, to my yet. It has not changed. There's nothing that has been added to me for six years. And you say you have been following me. You are you can Stay. We'll be praying for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, you need to read my book, Young Ministers and Ministry. I will, I will close. This sad sermon, eh? next week, we'll see. Because I'm not going to see. See. Next week. Eh, next week. Because we need to talk it well. Are, are you learning something? Yeah. I want you to really get. You see, the way I teach up it is you're going to do it once and then let's do it once and know we got it. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'll give you one more and then we're done. Are you blessed already? <laughs> If <laughs> you like, go and give your transport there for offering today. <laughs> <laughs> this will bless you. I'll give you just this one. We'll continue next week by the grace of God. Faithfulness. Faithfulness in the pursuit. Madam, you have a very fine writing. That writing can bring you millions. It can open doors for you. I can pray for your other writings open doors for you. Now. Okay. Faithfulness in what, sir? Your voice is sounding like those that want prophecy. Read it very well. Faithfulness in what, sir? <laughs> the pursuit, I'll pray for everybody today. In the pursuit of purpose attracts resources. It's like a magnet. Faithfulness. Ah, it's like a magnet. And I know what I'm talking about. It is like a magnet. Resources for its own fulfillment. Let me close my notes so you won't say, um, I didn't keep my word. I like to keep my word. Faithfulness, look up now. Okay, you are still writing. Faithfulness in the water, the pursuit of your purpose attracts what? Resources for its own fulfillment. That's how I was talking. Think about what I just said. Do you know what that means? Once you have discovered your purpose and you know, it's like, this is how my life is. This is how my life is affecting people. And you begin to invest your time, huh? energy, resources, mind. You begin to press into it. You will be surprised that resources will begin to come. And most times, now listen, most times the resources that first come in your pursuit of purpose is not money. Most times what we want is money. Money is not the first feedback to purpose. It's fulfillment within. You just know that ah, I'm making a difference. Is that true? And money cannot buy that. That's why people can have money and will go to hotel windows and jump down. They had money, but they didn't have fulfillment because they were, money was not tied to purpose for them. Are you seeing that? The next thing that happens is that there are resources. Another thing that happens is people will begin to suggest to you what you can do to make it better. If you are with me tonight, say yes. yes. yes people can just begin to. That's, that's, don't take you see, when Elijah. And his servant were praying. And he told the king, he said, he told the servant, he said, uh, go and check. And he went how many times? Seven times. There was no rain. Until the seventh time, he said, well, I see the cloud, the size of a man's hand, rising out of the sea. Ah, Elijah said, you don't understand. He said, that little sign you saw in the physical is a big thing in the spirit. He told hey, Ahab, sadly, you have begun to run. Why? Because it looks small in the physical, but it's very powerful in the spirit. When people begin to suggest to you better ways to do what you are doing, yeah, just know that it's a sign that something is happening in the spirit. Men don't just believe any vision. Go and check. They just believe it. You think you guys will just come because you just saw a man in suit. There is something in the spirit that has happened and you have agreed in your heart with the vision. I said, I believe this man. I believe this vision. I'll, I'll follow it. We may not be popular, but it doesn't matter. It's giving me good content. It's, it's a spiritual operation. Plus investment in knowledge. So when people begin to tell you, mm, ah, no, no, uh, that thing, that you're right, uh, mm, it, it can be better. Why don't you do it like this? Ah, that's your cake. 
that's your cake. Ah, this one is like stone. No, that can it be better? Once you begin to fight people that criticize you in the beginning, you will not do over. It will distract your creative power. I will teach you next week when I'm talking about money as an idea. It will distract, it will crush your creative ability. So all you'll be doing is investing your mind to fight people that are criticizing you, looking for what they are saying, rather than focusing on and building. So when we begin to tell you this, there is a better way to do it, don't fight it. Pick it, use it. You'll be surprised that because people like for people to receive their opinion. Do you know? Everybody likes their opinion to be received. Do you know? And when they say, okay, oh, you adjusted it a little, and they'll be like, ah, at least see, in leadership, people like to own division. Until people own division, we are not having anything. When they feel it's our own, and they are not saying it's your own, they, you know what I'm saying? I'll come to your church, and they are not your members. Those ones are visitors. But when they say, um, our service, talk. Language. So that's it. If money will come when you begin to pursue purpose. It will attract resources. Suddenly somebody will just say, ah, hey, this is your stuff you're doing. Revive 100. As simple as it was. Instruction. Revive 100. You will just see people say, ah, um, I think it still happened two days ago or yesterday, my wife. Somebody just sent money and said, data. Just do data for some people in the ministry who may want to follow Revive 100. Can you imagine? I think when we wanted to start, two people did that. And many of you do that. That's how it should be. They are not sending me the money and say, you are the man. But in one vision, there are many others that can benefit from it. One of the signs that a vision is true is that others too are rising because of that vision. That's why the scripture says, in thy light, we see light. Have you answered? Your attitude to money will change by the time we are done with this series. And you will be wealthy. Amen. And you will make impact. Amen. You will add value. Amen. And your money will be for God's purpose. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 If at any time, if at any time I'm sharing the word of God and you have questions, all right, feel free to send it to me.